So Mark, just come out of Sheriff Hutton there on the way to Beverly. Busy night last night and a couple of busy days ahead. Yeah, we were at the sales yesterday. Um, set off at 7 o'clock in the morning to go to the sales. Um, sold half Polly, we got 6,000 for him, uh, which is Stella Barkley bought him. I think she's got a real good buy. It's sound as a pound and she'll definitely win a few races with him, but we've got as far as we could with him. And um, we move on and we'll look for a replacement for him. Um, we also bought one, uh, 750 quid. Um, just one we take a chance on for some new clients. Um, and uh, yeah, I like the look of it. She had a little bit of form, so uh, no one's going to go bankrupt from that buy anyway. And um, yeah, I think we got back from uh, the sales about half past nine last night. It was a long day. See Beverly today. Um, two runners will we'll be back around about uh, half past six, seven o'clock, and then up to air tomorrow for the five o'clock. So it's uh, about ten hours driving tomorrow. Uh, in the horse box and um, we'll be back from there about uh, half past ten at night so yeah we're all, all busy on Friday we've got a few few owners coming in so uh, we we'll look forward to seeing them on Friday. Um, and on busy days when you're away from the yard um, like today for example there's still a few lots to go out so who's left back at the yard today and is it ever a concern? No not at all um, we're really lucky with who we've got in the yard um, my parents are normally there, they're actually away for a few days, um, taking a, a well-earned holiday, um, just going down south. Um, and yeah, in the yard at the moment we've got Will, uh, Will's been with us six years, he, he knows the ins and outs of the yard, he knows the horses. Uh, we have a fairly simple routine, so um, say Will, Will can manage the job when um, either I'm not there or my mum and dad aren't there, so no, it's never, never a worry, everything always gets done. So Mark, while we got you here, a few questions that the yards come up with that we feel like other people will be interested in. Um, the first one is, um, how's the yard been affected over Covid? Um, obviously everyone's been affected by it, um, us less so than others. Obviously we had um, a period with no racing, which was frustrating for everyone um, because we've got the horses ready to run at that time of year. Um, but people in a lot worse positions than us. We're really lucky, uh, the owners have been, every owner without exception has been really understanding of the situation and um, we haven't had any any people leaving us because of it. Um, so no, it's, it's obviously affected us but um, I think it could have been a lot worse. Um, a horse you consider biggest bargain or value for money? I think in recent years, um, Probably Magical Max. Um, we bought him from Newmarket. Uh, my dad bought him actually. Um, I was down there that day. He was uh, six thousand five hundred. Um, went on to win at York first time out and then first. This year's um, not been quite as good. He was second at Newmarket, um, but he's still he's still a horse with a lot of potential. And we found out a little problem with him actually that we're in the process of getting sorted out. So I think we're going to see uh, the best of him next year. Which race courses uh, do you prefer, flat and jump? Um, a flat track is a, a long way away, but um, when I when I worked for Mick Shannon, uh, I used to love going to Goodwood. Um, uh, we don't get a chance to go that down there much uh, now, but yeah, that's a flat track that I particularly like. And uh, a bit of an obvious one, but um, I love Cheltenham over jumps. Not particularly at the festivals, uh, I find it just massively busy, but um, we took Cornbra last year to the May meeting there where he just got beat, and um, all the owners um, had a lovely day out, and uh, I think, yeah, that's one of my favourite places to go. How would you normally prefer the horses to be ridden in a race? Um, I, I like things uncomplicated. Obviously some horses, if they're very keen, they might need dropping in a bit. Um, but generally my instructions to jockeys are uh, let them jump out the stalls in their own time and sit where they're comfortable. Uh, important they're in a rhythm. Um, I don't mind if, if, if they're first or last as long as they're going uh, through the race, as long as they're going nicely within themselves. If they're in front and happy, they're fine. And if they're not quick enough to, to get handy, if they sit a bit further back, that's fine as well. It's just uncomplicated. 
best race course for owners and trainers? Um, I think York. I think everyone, uh, uh, everyone that goes to York has positive things to say. I think they've got everything right there. Um, for pretty much staff, uh, owners and, and horses. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic place to go. Best race course for stable staff canteen? Uh, well, the, the big ones uh, are good, you know, Cheltenham and Aintree, um, they're, they're very good at the smaller courses we go to. Um, I think Market Racing does a good job, um, they give the, all, all the staff get a free meal, uh, which they don't have to do, but I think it's a, it's a nice gesture, um, sort of thing, but the owners and trainers are getting a free meal, which they do as well at Market Racing, the, the stable staff should as well, so yeah, Market Racing do a good job. Do you prefer jump season or flat season? Uh, it's a tricky one that. Um, generally by the end of the flat season I'm really looking forward to getting the jumpers going and vice versa. Um, end of the jumps, I'm, you know, got a few younger horses to come through on the flat, a few yearling, a few two year olds ready to run and that's an exciting time as well so I couldn't I couldn't really say. Best ride from a jockey on one of your horses? Uh, that's a tricky one, I mean, there's a lot, lot to mention, a lot of had good rides. Uh, one horse that was particularly tricky um, was Cash to Ash. Uh, Jamie Hamilton rode him at Newcastle, and although he won easily in the end, he won by quite a, a wide margin. Uh, his jumping was absolutely horrendous that day. Uh, he'd fallen the time before at Weatherby when he was, when he was going to win. Uh, so it was a nervous watch that race and there was a couple of bad mistakes and Jamie did a very, very good job of uh, keeping him organised and keeping um, keeping on top of him. Which local trainer or trainers do you highly rate? There's a lot round us, I couldn't mention all of them. Um, around the Malton area, uh, lots of very good trainers. Uh, I'd probably just say cause, uh, I work for him, John Quinn. Um, I think take a lot of encouragement from what John has done so when I was there he was buying cheapish horses cheapish yearlings and he did very well with them and he's progressed up and you see how he's getting the you know he's, he's getting some bigger owners now um, and some some really decent young horses um, running in a lot of the best races so I just I, I would say him just because when I started there he's just been on a massive upward curve. Last question, what do you find the most difficult about your job? Uh, there's a few things, I mean uh, obviously it's some long days um, which you get used to, um, you're in it because you love the job, not to, not really a job as they say, it's a way of life. Um, I think one of the diff most difficult things is when things go wrong and you've got to give people bad news because the, the owners don't, we're in a small yard like ours, they're not just, um, you don't look at them as just clients, you get to know them well, um, you become friends with them and then you, you just want the horses to run well and everything to go right when, when you have to give people some bad news, it's, um, that's, uh, 